Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. In this session, we are going to discuss about Python shallow copy and deep copy. So guys, this is a very important topic. Some people are very confused in shallow copy and deep copy. And in today's session, we will be discuss also what is the difference between shallow copy and deep copy. Okay, guys. So before jumping into the shallow copy and deep copy in Python programming, it is very necessary to understand the difference between mutable and immutable objects. Okay. So let's take an example to understand these mechanism in greater details. So guys, first of all, what I'm doing, I'm taking a variable where I'm going to store some value. Let's say X equal to 100. And what I'm doing here, the same value, same value means the same value of X, or you can say that this particular variable itself, I'm going to assign the variable. Okay. So guys here, these two variables store the same number and also X and Y referencing the same identity of an object. Okay. So look at this. X is also keeping the same value and Y is also keeping the same value. Now what I'm doing here, if I'm going to check what is the ID of Y and what is the ID of X. So guys, you can see here, I am getting the same address or same identity of an object because I'm going to store the same value in X and Y. All right. So guys here, you know, very well numbers are immutable. So if you will change any of variable, then that variables creates a new object and hold the updated value. Okay. So let me tell you. So guys, Y is holding hundred. So what I'm doing here, Y equal to X plus one. So X contain hundred, then hundred plus one become 101. But when I'm going to checking the address of Y, because the numbers has been changed, right? As I told you, numbers are immutable. So when you are going to store 100, it means that 100 will keep a separate address. In case you have changed your number in the same variable, then what will happen? Your variable address or your variable identity will change automatically. Look at this. Because earlier my value was 100, but right now is 101. So the value has been changed, then address will also change. But the old value object, which means X will not change anymore. So right now X is containing 100. The address will remain same of X, right? So it will not change anymore. So guys, simple, you have to remember numbers are immutable object. If you will change anything that will create a new object in memory. Okay. Now, if you will do the same operation on mutable object, then all the variables holding the same reference. So for an example, I am going to creating a list. So one, two, three, four. And guys, you know very well, list is a mutable object, right? Now what I'm doing here, new list equal to LST. Now LST is holding one, two, three, four, right? So guys, similarly, new LST is also holding the same value. But right now, if I'm going to checking the address of LST and the address of new LST, both are same. Okay. And these two objects refers to as mutable object. Okay. Now let me do some manipulation. Okay. So guys in my existing list, which is new list, I am going to append a word, which is Python. So look at this. This is the updated value of new list. And when I'm going to show you the LST, LST will also change. Okay. Because this is the list support the mutable object. If you will change any of the mutable object, both object will change automatically. All right, guys. So the word Python will add it into a list or new LST as well means both list will modify and referencing also the same object. Okay. So this thing you have to keep in mind. All right. So if you will check the ID of new LST equal to equal to ID of LST, both list are holding the same identity. Okay, guys. And what if, if you are doing the same operation with nested list? Okay. So guys, some people are very confused. Okay. I am telling you why. So let's say this is the LST or new LST, right? So directly they assign. Okay. You remember we have assigned like new LST equal to LST. Okay. So simple assignment operator we are using here. All right. Okay. So some people, what they are doing, they are creating a LST equal to, let's say double one, double two, double three, and double four. And they are using here new 
LST equal to LST dot copy method. Okay, so here I'm using list copy method, right? So ID of LST is the different and ID of new LST is different. Okay, so guys, some people think this is the deep copy. No, this is the cello copy, right? So copy method will not give you the deep copy kind of mechanism, right? So again, if I'm going to change LST dot append, and let's say again, for an example, Swift, this is the LST and this is the new LST, right? So what is happening here, right? It is working like a deep copy. So guys, look at here. Here is the catch, right? So both lists are holding the different, different address. So if you will change LST, so only LST will change. This new list will not change. Okay, so right now copy method just behave like a deep copy. But what if, if you are going to the same operation on nested list? So let's take an example to understand that part as well, right? So guys, right now I am going to create a same variable and I'm go going to hold 1, 2, 3 and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? And what I'm doing here, new LST equal to LST dot copy, right? This is the LST and this is the new LST. And both list is holding the different address as well as we have seen. Make sense? Now, what I'm doing here, look at this again, guys, try to understand LST dot append. And again, let's say C++. So right now in my this LST, I am going to append C++. So what will happen? So this C++ will be added separate. It will be added a separate item at the end of the list. Look at this. Now, if you will check the new LST, so it will not change anymore. But guys, try to understand, right? So here, please listen to me carefully what I'm saying. If you will check, okay, LST of zero. All right. And what I'm doing here in the LST of zero, that is that output in the form of what is the output of LST of zero in the form of list. Now what I'm doing here, let's say append for an example, Python. So can I print LST? Look at this. And what if, if I'm going to print new LST? So can you see here? So guys, what is happening here? So here right now, this copy method just behave a deep copy, okay? Up to one level deep copy, right? So what is happening here? If you are going to refer entire list, that entire list is containing a different identity. Similarly, similarly, the new list is also containing a different identity. But when you are going to checking the components of both the list, checking the components of both the list means, so for an example, ID and LST of zero, an ID of new LST of zero. So both list components or both sublist holding the same reference. Similarly, LST of two, right? Let me check the ID. Same ID of new LST of two is also holding the same. So if you will do the sum manipulation, let's say Java. So what will happen? LST will also change and new LST will also change. Okay. So guys, we cannot apply the deep copy method or deep copy mechanism using the copy method. Okay. But sometimes people are confused. Yes, LST is giving the same separate address and new LST is also giving you the separate address. Okay. So I will be assume right now these both lists are working as a deep copy. But guys, it's just a myth. But if you will check its components, this components are referring the same address. This components also are referring the same address. Although entire list, this list and this list are referring to the different identity, right? But its components are holding the same reference, right? But now the question is how we can apply the deep copy in Python programming. All right. So guys, the question is how we can apply the deep copy in Python program. So simple guys, right now, cello copy and deep copy. So you know the meaning of the cello copy and deep copy, right? I am taking a help from the copy modules. 
and here x equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 and here y equal to guys copy dot copy and here x id of x and id of y right x dot append now let me print the x and let me print the y right so both list holding a different address it means if you will change only x x will change but right now if you will do the same thing right if you will do do the same thing with the help of you know nested list so look at this so new lst1 equal to copy dot copy and lst so guys this is the new lst1 so new lst1 of 0 dot append let's say a b so this one and similarly lst will change okay so the same operation using the copy method also as we have seen using the list copy but again guys the question is remain same how we can apply the deep copy so guys to apply the deep copy it is very easy using the copy method or you can say that copy module so guys to understand the deep copy let me create a list so list one equal to all right simple now new lst1 equal to copy dot deep copy and i am going to keeping this one now this is the lst1 and this is the ls new lst1 lst1 all right so guys right now can you check here id of lst1 of 0 now id of new lst one of zero so can you see here these are the list components this is the list components list one components and this is new list one components both components are referring to the separate separate address so it is clearly proven if you will change this only this will change if you will change this only this will change all right so look at this so for i in range and what i am doing here print id of lst1 of i comma id of new lst1 of i so guys can you see here all the address are different okay so again let me print the lst1 and new lst1 so lst1 of 0 or let me do in the entire list first of all let's say abc so this is the lst1 now no change in new lst1 now what i'm doing here i am going to accessing the first components of list like this and in this components guys i am going to append let's say abc again when i'm going to print lst1 only lst1 will change but no change in new lst1 okay so guys it is clearly proven both lists are holding the different different address and its components also holding a different different address okay so this is the meaning of deep copy so guys i hope you understood the shallow copy and deep copy how we can apply these two mechanism in the python programming and i hope you understood the difference between these two in case you are finding any difficulty to understand these mechanism in details so please let me know in the comment okay guys so please do the practice of this session as much as you can. Thanks for watching and have a great day.